I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwaterquarium.com. This is Mr. Saltwater Tank, RUF, raw, uncut, first impressions. The show where I call it as I see it, and today we're looking at a product that's been all over the message boards and all over socials, the Reef Delete. What is the Reef Delete? Well, it is an Aptasia Mahano Pest Algae Pest Coral Killer. Okay, how does it do that? Well, it does it through ultraviolet radiation. So. Let me also make more sense in a minute. Just a little background on this show. When my reefing buddies find out that I had this thing, they were like, hey, come over to my house right now and come zap some Atasia. I hate those suckers. I want them out of my tank. So I've already opened this thing up. I've actually already used it. I'm in the process of nuking some Aptasia in a reefer's tank. So I'm going to tell you what I found by working with this thing and some important pieces of info that I didn't discover by actually reading the instructions. So. First things first, I have to say, the packaging, I was impressed with. I feel like I'm opening up something from Apple. We got one section up here that has these really cool orange glasses, and no, they're not for uh, checking out your tank under the LED blues. I guess you could do that if you want. This thing emits ultraviolet radiation, so they're actually safety glasses, so you don't accidentally get some UV radiation into your eye. So. We do everything super safe here at saltwateraquarium.com. I'm gonna keep the safety glasses on for the rest of this review. You got a sticker because everybody loves stickers. Now, here's one thing that took me a minute to figure out. This comes with a lithium battery and for safety purposes, it's not charged when you get it. You actually have to charge it. And like a lot of things these days, it doesn't include a charger and it doesn't include a cord. So you're gonna need a micro USB cord and you're gonna need some kind of wall charger. Not a problem, most people have tons of those sitting around. But the catch with that is, when I decided, I was like, okay, it's time to charge this thing. I was like, where's the charging port? Well, it's actually on the battery. Check this out. There's a shot of it. It's on the battery itself. So if you're looking to charge this thing, there's no port on the reef delete itself. It's actually on the battery, which is pretty cool. And it has an LED to let, that's red when it lets you know it's low or out of charge. And then there's a green LED to let you know that it's fully charged. But how does this thing work? Well. There are a couple of neat safety features to this thing that took me a minute to figure out, but they're actually pretty slick. First of all, you th I felt like I wanted to take this cover off. Well, this contains two electrodes under there, and they're there so that it only works underwater. If I try to turn this thing on out of water, it actually flashes at me and says, hey, you're not underwater. We're not going to emit any ultraviolet radiation. Um, so it has to be underwater to make it work, and that's what the electrodes are. That was pretty cool. Then there's a button here, which is the trigger. Now, a couple things that I figured out by working with this thing. First, as the instruction says, this thing is called a snoot. You have to burp this thing. So when you put it underwater, if you put it underwater like this, there's gonna be air trapped in here. The ultraviolet radiation is gonna get very far. So make sure you turn it on its side or turn it up and let the air out. And in fact, they actually recommend you can take the snoot off. It just screws like that. And then it looks just like a regular flashlight. So up to you if you want to use that or not. We used both ways and it really wasn't any different to us. But just keep in mind, this thing is only going to work underwater. So you put it underwater, you fire it, you just point it right at whatever it is you're trying to zap. A couple things. One, make sure you have your safety glasses on. And two, when you have these on, it can be a little hard to see where this thing is aiming. It emits a green light, that's the ultraviolet radiation, but it's hard to look at wherever you're aiming it and actually see. So it actually would be nice if this had some kind of little laser, like Amy laser, so I can know exactly where it was pointing. Because as I was using it, I found it was a little hard to know exactly where I'm pointing this thing. Now, when you did point it directly at whatever you're zapping, it would actually wither away. I'll talk about that in the next episode. But you're wondering where this thing is pointing. Again, I'd like to see some kind of like red LED on there so I know where it's going. The other thing I will say about this is Using this, it's really a two-person job. One person is going to be looking to make sure you're in the right spot. You are going to be operating this thing. You got to put it underwater like I talked about, and then you have to press the button. One mistake a lot of people make with this thing is they think it's a one and done type thing. They're like, oh, I just point it at the adaptation. Okay, great. I'm done. I can walk away. I found that not to be true. Now, I haven't actually killed, completely killed off some adaptation in my friend's tank. This is gonna take a couple days, so this is a review in progress. I'll talk more about that in the next episode. So if you're picking up the Reef Delete, you're thinking, oh, I'll just use this once or twice. 
these Mahanos or Aptasia or whatever will be gone. Not quite. You need to use this a couple times, radiate whatever it is you're trying to kill, probably a couple times over the course of a couple days to make sure that it's really gone. The other caveat with that is, it's not just like a 10 second exposure and then you walk off. They recommend exposing whatever you're trying to delete for at least a minute. And I would say you should do it for a minute and a half, two minutes. Really, you gotta hold it on there, blast the thing. The fun part is, when you get it aimed directly onto whatever you're trying to delete, and the UVC really gets going, that ultraviolet radiation really starts hitting it, you can watch the thing wither away. It's very satisfying. It's like instant gratification. You can watch the adaptation and be like, ah, melt it, and it's gone. Don't give up. Keep hitting the thing, just pound it, hit it while it's down, plan on irradiating it for at least a minute. So that's my first look at the reef delete. As I said, I'm in the process of zapping some anemones at a fellow reefer's tank. If you get it, remember you gotta charge it. The charger port is on the battery and you're gonna need your own cord. You're gonna need your own charger for your safety glasses. And again, I think this is a two person job. One person's gonna make sure you're aiming it correctly. You're gonna do the zapping and make sure you zap it for at least a minute and a half, if not two minutes. So there we go. By the way, since you all like instant gratification, and I know you wanted to know what it looks like, here's a quick shot of an Aptasia getting zapped by the Reef Delete. So I'll report back next week on how that Aptasia zapping went, and I'll give you the full rundown and my full thoughts on the Reef Delete after I've been using it, and we hopefully get rid of those nasty Aptasia, which I know so many of you out there absolutely hate. Mm -hmm.